Without a doubt, homes are a lot less affordable now than they were a year ago. So does affordability represent a looming housing crisis? So in this video, I'm going to give you three things to consider if you're in the market to buy a home now. Hi, this is Andrew with the S2 real estate team in Frisco, Texas. And I don't know if you saw the video I did last week. Um, got a lot of comments. Um, a lot of people disagreed. Some people did agree, which is great. That That's fine. Because I talked all about why I don't think the housing market is going to crash. So how is it that last week I can talk about there not being a housing market crash? And this week, I'm talking about a looming housing crisis. So let me explain, and I will get to those three things that you can do or consider if you're in the market to buy a home currently. So first off, last week when I talked about the market crashing, based on the data, it doesn't look right now as though we're going to see a housing market crash. Now, again, remember the true definition of a housing market crash would be a rapid deceleration of housing values. And that's not what I think is going to happen. Does that mean I don't think we will see some form of adjustment, some sort of a correction? No, it doesn't mean that at all. As a matter of fact, in most areas of the country, we are already seeing that. And I know we're seeing it here in Frisco and Prosper, Texas, where we are based. So when you look at that, you will already notice that home prices are down from where they were just a few months ago. The market's definitely changed. There aren't the multiple offers. There aren't the bidding wars. There isn't this frenzy type atmosphere going on anymore. And although home prices have come down, they've kind of leveled off. And as I went into last week, basically home prices are at the mercy of supply and demand. And the expectation when a lot of these reports came out was supply was going to keep going up. The new home builders had been building. So a glut of new construction was going to come onto the market, plus the inventory from standard sellers in the face of rapidly declining demand. And that currently is not what we are seeing. Has there been a drop off in demand? Yes, demand has absolutely softened. But demand hasn't necessarily softened because people don't want to buy. It's softened because in many areas, homes are unaffordable. Actually, there I'm going to show you a graph in just a minute that shows you homes are at a historically low level in terms of affordability. As a matter of fact, here's that graph now, and it shows housing affordability index going all the way back to 1990. And the black dotted line across the screen represents a reading of 100. And what the reading of 100 means is that is considered the baseline, at which point the average wage earner can afford the average priced home in the country. So this would be a different graph for every single city, every single uh, metropolitan area across the country, but this is national. And it shows that right now we have a reading of 98.5, which going all the way back to 1990 is as unaffordable as it has been. And that is definitely having an impact. What wasn't expected is that the supply of homes has started to taper. It's gone down. It normally does seasonally, but what we've seen already is we've seen a huge push, at least here in North Texas, we've seen a huge push by the builders to get ahead of this, get ahead of this curve, and their sales are brisk. Now, is this going to be the same where you live? I don't know. It's going to be different in every single market across the country. But here... I can tell you that builders have got ahead of it. And how have they done that? Well, let's look at it, right? So when you consider what housing affordability is, it's based up of three things. It's the price of homes, interest rates, and wages. Those three things together, all combined, indicate how housing affordability is. And we all know prices have soared, right? So that without a doubt, we also know interest rates have soared. 
which leaves wages. Wages are up, but not keeping up with inflation. There's definitely some headwinds up ahead. So with that in mind, let's take a look at one other graph here. And this is showing the debt to income ratio. Okay, so normally 25% is shown as a key benchmark point. And this is assuming a 30 year fixed rate mortgage with 20% down payment. And this is looking at the principal and interest payment amount in relation to income. And you can see here going all the way back to 2000, that 25% is the point where lenders have started to look at things and said, okay, if it gets above 25%, we're going to have to look at this because that's the that's their indicator. That's their mark. They don't want to see it exceed that. And so we hit 25.4%. So is it way over? No, but it is a sign of things slowing down with regards to the lending front. Hence, you're seeing mortgage applications drop. Hence, you're seeing all of a sudden contract cancellations go up because people that could afford a home back in February can't afford it anymore understand that. And that is absolutely going to happen. As a matter of fact, I just saw a report that shows the average mortgage payment is up 53.7% year over year. Now we all know income is not up 53.7% year over year. We wish it was, but it's not. Now, all that being said, the other thing to consider in this is there's still plenty of people that want to buy, right? That demand, it's kind of sitting on the sidelines. It's not a lot of people have turned around and said, I, I just don't want to buy anymore. Has that happened to some? Absolutely. Is it everybody? No. Remember, you've still got the largest percentage of the population coming into prime home buying age. And I know that a lot of that population wants to buy. We are seeing it here all the time, here in Frisco and Prosper. So with that in mind, let's go into those three things for you to consider if you're in the market to buy a home now, but are trying to navigate the uncertainty of, of what we're dealing with right now and affordability. Number one, expand your search area. And I know that might not be a popular idea, um, but you might not be able to live in the heart of the city. You might not be able to afford where you thought you could or where you wanted to just a few months ago. You're going to have to go further out. Homes are much less expensive depending on how far you're willing to drive. Considering that the work from home has kind of taken off in the last couple of years, and I know a lot of people now are not being forced back into the office every day, it's making this a more viable option than it has been many times or it has been traditionally in the past. I can tell you when I bought my first home, I was in the exact same boat. The prices in the area where I was currently renting were unaffordable. I, I flat out couldn't do it. It was a stretch. We ended up moving 30 miles north of where we wanted to be and bought the exact same home that we were looking at for substantially less money. Did we have a drive? We did. But it was the trade-off we were willing to make at that time. So depending again, where you live, there's other areas open to you. If you're right around the Frisco area here, there's some great opportunities in Salina that still have Prosper ISD schools where you can get into homes under 400 or in the low to mid 400s. So you can also be looking up into Anna and Melissa and you can start going further south or head out towards Hearst or Rockwall. There's definitely more options available to you if you're willing to expand your search area. Number two, explore all of your financing options. No, the liar loans from the past and the negative amortization loans, those don't even exist anymore. But you may or may not have seen it, but there's a popular phrase been going around that says, marry the house, date the rate. It's largely expected that mortgage rates will come back down in the next 12 to 18 months. Does anyone know for sure? course not. There's a lot of uncertainty in the overall economy. The Federal Reserve have indicated that they're going to remain aggressive on inflation, which is going to have an impact on mortgage rates. So with that in mind, we're starting to see some other options come in. And this is where, as I referenced earlier, the new home builders 
have keyed in and it's allowed them to move a substantial amount of inventory. What many of the new home builders have been doing is buying the rate down. There are several new home builders right now where you can fix a 30 rate mortgage in the high threes or low fours based on incentives that the builder is putting in place. That's substantially better than a rate in the high fives. Another thing to consider and to possibly work with your lender on is an adjustable rate mortgage. Very, very popular uh, many years ago, and it allows you to start at a much lower rate now. That rate may be fixed for two, three, four, five, seven years, and then it will adjust after that. The idea behind it is that you could refinance, hence why they say marry the house, date the rate, because you can refinance that to a lower rate, assuming that those rates come down again in the next 12 to 24 months. Great lending partner that we have locally actually has a program in place that will allow you to do just that at no out-of-pocket cost to you when it becomes time to refinance. So again, explore any and all of those financing options available. Number three, many of the areas around here where we are, there's down payment assistance and there's grants that are available that can really help lower those costs and you know, reduce the amount of money you need to get into a home, which is a big factor for many, many buyers. So a, a great website, go ahead and write this down, downpaymentresource.com. Again, downpaymentresource.com. You can look things up by county, anywhere in the country, and it's going to let you know what programs are available in your area where you can see if you qualify for some of those down payment assistance programs, whether they be grants or whether they be other type of incentives that you can get that will allow you to get into the home that you're looking for. So again, just three options for you to consider there. Um, if you're looking to buy a home now, uh, and don't want to wait because let's face it, rent isn't getting any cheaper. We've had more people come back to us in the last few weeks because all of a sudden their rent has been increased by four, five, six hundred dollars a month. So it's rampant everywhere. If you can get into a home of your own and it makes sense, doesn't for everybody. And I understand that, which is fine. So the best thing to do is to give us a call. You can reach us at 469-296-5230. If you need to, we'll put you in touch with our lending partner to explore any and all options so that you can make the best decision for you as that's what matters the most. And that decision is going to be different for every single person. Again, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, that number is 469-296-5230, where you can always send us an email at contact at s2realestateteam.com.